Uh, pleasure to be here with you tonight. Can we bring the lights up just a, a little bit? There we go. That's better. I like to be able to see you guys. Can you see me? Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, good. Now, I'm going to start out. Um, I have to uh, set the stage here. Um, I'll roll up my sleeves. That gives me kind of an aura of integrity. <laughs> it's the best I can do. <laughs> now, uh, folks, I'm going to show you a little trick. This is a, 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 a magic trick. This is going to be our little stage here. Um, <coughs> it looks really fancy, but it's, it's just a card trick. <coughs> and it's a, a mathematical card trick. But it's a classic. <laughs> you want to see it? Yeah. 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 It's called a six card trick. And um, it's a, it's, I actually have exactly six cards in this little envelope just for this trick. And I know there are exactly six cards here because I counted them myself. <laughs> and I was a professional card counter in Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> Nevertheless, there may be some of you, we, we want to be on the same page. We want everybody to be together. So count with me. We'll count just for the sake of the record. We have one, one two, two, three, three four, four, five, five six, six, seven. Um, <laughs> <all right. laughs> Someone's fooling with the props. It's not that funny. <laughs> we'll count again just so we're on the same page because it is important that we know how many cards you use. We have one, one two, two, three, three four, four, five, five and six. six. Playing cards. Now, here's the idea. It's important that we have exactly six and everybody know that because not just because the name of the trick is the uh, six card trick. <coughs> But because the idea of the trick is I'm going to take one of these cards and throw it away like that. Just throw it into the crowd. And in spite of that, when I count, I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five, and six playing cards. I know you're laughing because you don't think that's possible. But it is, and I will demonstrate it. And it doesn't matter if I throw the card off this way or that way. It's not going to make a bit of difference. No matter how many, I'll, I'll, throw it right, I'll throw it right down the center like that. And still, look, folks, I have one, two, two three, three, four, four five. five. Did I drop one? Right by your feet. What? Well, look, hold on. Let me check. One, two, three, four, five. Oh. Oh. Uh, I thought I made a mistake. <laughs> well, obviously not. Get these things out of here. All right. <laughs> so here's the idea of the trick. Um, we'll, we'll give it a shot. We'll take uh, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> All right. One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> Alright folks, um, there's evidently something wrong um, with the mathematics in this room, <laughs> which is understandable when you think about it because this is a magic castle, right? And it's a lot bigger inside um, than it is outside. <laughs> Have you noticed? That throws all the measurements in the house off. So just a little bit. But now, now that I've figured out what's going on, we can adjust. <laughs> and I can do that old trick where you take one, two, three, four, five, <coughs> and six playing cards. And you toss away one. And you still have one, two, three, four, five, and six. Yeah. You are listening. You are listening. He said. He said. She said. She said. With LA Rob. LA Rob. D the VIP. D the VIP. Oh yeah. So I want to. Um, I wanted to ask you. It seems like your. Your like with your audience, you're up close and personal. And you, um, <laughs> you're really funny. So you add like, like, 
it seems like you you could have gone either way. you could have been a comedian or a magician because you it's so funny when you do your um your stand-ups and things so it did you was that well, yeah, something that you developed a, over time of, i worked in a lot of comedy clubs back uh, in my early career and um i enjoyed doing comedy but magic is is the real thing the comedy is there to to help make the magic better not the other way around oh. uh, so the magic's really the focus mm-hmm. you know uh, but you have to make it palatable first you have to make people want to watch it you have to draw their attention and you know um you have to overcome their objections you know like oh the that trick or the linking rings i've seen that before you know mm-hmm. so you have to kind of like um set things up so that uh you can get through to them i like the idea that uh to me the uh, the magician character is more of a uh, pop is a fantasy character mm-hmm. um not like most magic um magician characters pop is like a character from a movie if you've seen a medicine show movie with a character on the movie screen to me the idea is that i wanted to to be like that actor that 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 character professor marvel from mm. uh, the wizard of oz oh, came okay. on the screen and, and and talk to you right and uh, you get to inter, inter, interject with him you get to play with him and you know you can you know have the experience of actually being in the movie that's what i find so refreshing about uh you as a mag- uh, magician is that you do have the character of pop and it is like somebody stepping out of the 1900s and doing uh doing magic and it's one of those things where it's like um like you said is is this a trick or is you know or is it magic like kind of what's going on it has that kind of feel to it yeah. which is different uh now when you compare it to uh the magicians who are out and you know they're doing more um you know stuff that's almost like a concert or something yeah yeah you know, it's like they, right. they go for this big old um big thing versus just that that human contact and the the one on one and you engage you know everybody right. in the room yeah and just for clarity could could you tell me like what is the difference between a up close you know uh, you know parlor magician and an and a and a, an illusionist like well how are they different yes that's, uh, uh, illusion uh is short for grand illusion mm. and a grand illusion is any a uh, trick any illusion involving an animal bigger than a dog hmm. uh you know like if it's a tiger or a lion or a person a human being that's grand illusion and uh stage magic is usually bigger magic with rings and boxes and and livestock rabbits and doves and stuff like that um and uh then the close up magic is magic with small items mm-hmm. uh, like coins and cards Hmm. that you can do right at the table with somebody. Oh, okay. Yeah, I also we know all those kinds of magic at the Magic Castle. We have different rooms, different theaters for each kind of magic. Wow. Now, is the skill level for different from, you know, table magic? Are they all kind of equally um difficult to do or well, A lot of it is a lot of it is very different skills. Hmm. Um the stage magic um the bigger the trick the more it becomes a mechanical trick mm. where the uh, mirrors and trap doors mechanical devices make the magic happen mm. mm-hmm. whereas with close up magic it's usually a uh, sleight of hand mm. uh skill with the hands that makes the magic happen speaking of sleight of hand you also work with the FBI and other law enforcement agents to help them identify when uh people are using sleight of hands i think some of the casinos and places like that to help them identify when a person is uh using sleight of hand correct oh i have i i have, I have not done that that is not my field oh, um, okay. i am a, I, i i do uh uh work in 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 con games rather than uh card oh con cheating. games so like three con co- games yes my 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 expertise is in the three card money and oh, okay. shell game and fast and loose and all those little street cons oh, oh. Uh, switch 
kind of things. Yeah, right uh, yeah, different. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, oh no, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I, I've written several books and, and put out several videos on the techniques of uh, street scammers right. and carnival uh, people, um, and for, for magicians to learn how to how to do it. Yeah, I know. I, I noticed. I was looking. Uh, you have a book out called "Stories of a Street Performer: uh, Memo- Memoirs of a Master Magician." Yeah, that's the, that's the basic of the book about my experiences in New York when I was a kid, yeah. and it's in my twenties in, in New York City. Oh, nice. So, so is that is that available as a as an ebook or? Um... Yeah, you can you can you can uh, get it on Amazon. Uh, it's uh, Stories of a Street Performer by Pop Hayden. Oh, sweet. Um, Mikazumi uh, Press. Oh, nice. It's a fun book. It's, a, it's, a, it's an easy read. Oh, okay. Uh, what, what, what do you think is the bis- biggest lesson you learned as a street performer? What, what was the biggest what? Lesson you learned as a street performer. Oh. Well, you learn so many things working as a street performer because you have an audience that you have to attract Mm -hmm. and you have to hold them and Mm -hmm. you have to keep them there uh, for the length of the show and then you have to get money from them. Mm -hmm. So other than, like, unlike most performers, you really know why you're there and your whole show is designed to get the money (laughs) and to get people to like you enough that they give you a tip. Oh, okay. It can't be too long or... Can't be too long, or they'll walk off. Can't be, you know. You have to hold their attention and find all kinds of tricks to keep their attention. And to this day, uh, when I'm working in a in a theater, uh, a large theater, I, I still feel like the people are going to walk away any chance they get. <laughs> so I work at it like they were a street audience. Oh, okay. Yeah, I I, I notice um, you you know there is no dead air you know you you know your act is very is very tight like yeah it has to be because it's it's so slow mm. (laughs) (laughs) it's it's paced paced at a very slow uh kind of relaxed pace so you can't have any dead air you can't have any dead spaces it's got to hold people's attention you know even even through a a long uh pitch about the medicine Mm. Mm-hmm. So, so for someone who but the, uh, the medicine show, by the way, uh, selling the medicine in my show and, and selling uh, the various things I do, mm-hmm. uh, that gives me kind of like a street performer, kind of a sense of how the show is is developed. It's it's all meant to sell the product. <laughs> you know, so right. when I do the full show, it's it's going to have you know uh, everything oriented toward that. Most of the time, I'm only doing a small part of the show. You know, on a uh, the Magic Cats or a place like that I only do 20-30 minutes mm-hmm. but my full show is an hour and sometimes a uh, two hour show oh wow so uh, so so my question to you um, so like say if, if for aspiring magicians um, how would they get started how, do they, how would they like you know put an act together and you know craft well, a persona like how how where do you even begin? Well, first, first, most magicians start. Uh, they they get in, in in touch with a magic shop either online or uh, in locally, mm-hmm. and that's where you can find most of the uh, a local magic shop. If you have one, is is the best place to go because then they'll know who the local magicians are and who the teachers are and where the meetings for magic clubs are and all that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So it's like a secret society almost. It is a secret society, but it's not really the secret so much. It's just, you know, it's more like a, a fan gathering. You know, the magicians, uh, both amateur and professionals, just love magic and love talking about it. And, mm-hmm. You know, showing it to each other. And, uh, so it's it's not so much that it's a guild to hide the secrets as it is a, a club for, for fans, for people that love magic. Mm. Nice. nice. There are no real secrets in magic. I mean, every trick has a secret to it, but... You know, the whole idea is it's, the secret's not as important as the psychology and other things that, that go along in creating the, the trick. Mm. Um, you, a trick is a whole big thing that exposes on people. The idea of magic is, of course, you can do a Twilight Zone story about magic, 
where you talk about what would it mean if you could pull coins out of the air or you could do this, that, or the other, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know. But a magic show is where it actually happens to you, where the coin actually does come out of the air. Okay. You know? And, and you know, you, you're like experiencing the magic yourself. It's sort of as if Doctor Who um, came up to you and told you this cra crazy looking character, Doctor Who came up and told you that he was a time lord from the planet Gallifrey and <laughs> right, he's got to right. save the universe and he needs your help and you're thinking he's an idiot. <laughs> and then he pulls out the sonic screwdriver and it actually works. Exactly. <laughs> right. Right. And it right. takes you into the TARDIS and it's actually bigger inside than it was outside. Right. Yeah. And you're going, this guy is real. Right. Well, exactly. That's what a magician is kind of doing. Wow. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So it the magic is the proof that he is who he said he was. <laughs> and that seemed to be like what what I noticed with with your show is uh, you you talk about like again like you said with the coins about yeah what if a coin could because I saw the uh, demonstration or the show that you did with uh, some coins I think you had like six coins and you had. Uh, uh, a couple of coins go from one hand to the other oh, hand, yeah. and then you you tell them to hold your wrist and wrist and say, okay, there's going to be two more coins are going to go there. So I think it's like because you say this is going to happen, it's like ah oh, okay, but then when it does happen, uh, you know you find yourself like wow yeah yeah how did that happen? And yeah. then it's almost like you anticipate what we're thinking because you said, oh, I know you think it's a trick, you, you know, so why yeah. don't you hold my arms yeah. and then we'll do it again. And that's when it really and is, you, you know, so the first while it's like, wow, oh, but then when you do the arm, then it, you really have us because <laughs> I found myself like, wow, yeah. like how did this happen? So I'm looking at it on TV and I'm rewinding and then I'm playing it slow. I'm trying to like catch windows this transfer happen and I right. never caught anything right <laughs> so so and, it's and, like, and I like the other trick you did with the the tantrum tan, oh, the, the, yeah, tan, the, the cylinder the, the cylinders with the with the with liquor the bottle yeah. and the, um, oh, the glass bottles yeah, yeah. Right. dude I love that and one the, and the glasses went on top of the you know just it was all these bottles and I was like up. how then, is he even doing this and then it, you it, stick your hand through the tube so it's like so you catch us because at first we're like oh he's picking up the bottles with the tube and you show us and right when we think that you show us you stick your hand straight through the tube to let us know <laughs> nothing is in there like you hear us thinking and then you <laughs> then just so that you can get us, you set the two down and pick it back up and whoa, there's another bottle after we've seen that there was nothing in yeah. there. So it's like you read our mind and is that something well, as a street kind of like that because the magician has to anticipate the spectator's objections to his claims. Mm -hmm. and okay. He has to come up with a, a way of deflecting those objections, mm -hmm. you know, and, and proving that they were wrong. So that that's why the table has a very thin tabletop that you can see under it. Yeah. So you can tell there's no bottles underneath, you know. Right. And um, we... Uh, uh, yeah, it's a great yeah, trick. Everything is set up so that, so that the argument for the magic is clear. And we cheat. You know, basically what magic is, it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, in that, it's a valid argument with, uh, the premises are not true. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm going to, I'm going to put a coin in my left hand. No, you didn't. You just pretended to put a coin in your left hand. I'll click my fingers and now I open my left hand. The coin has disappeared. Well, no, it's still in your right hand. See, but that's, uh, uh, that's basically the argument you're creating, and if the people buy the premise that it's in your left hand, they're screwed. Right. And then the coin did vanish. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. So, like, do you do a lot of, um, do you do mainly corporate shows, or do you do, like, uh, like, are you at the Magic Castle? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm 70, uh, so I, I really don't like to travel so much like I, I used to. I used to work on cruise ships all around the world and wow. uh, do a lot of nightclubs and other things. I would have never thought you were 70, sir. What? I would have never t uh, thought you were you were, you were 70. 70. Like, you look like oh. <laughs> 50. Well, I, I, I never worked for a living, so it's kept me young. <laughs> 
Uh, <laughs> you, you, yeah, you're doing what you love. I yeah, think. And that's they, what's they keeping say you young. that do what you love and you'll never work a day. That's really what it feels like. I, I work mostly in the L.A. area when I can, and, and I'm trying to set up my theater, theater shows where we do the medicine show with the music and everything. Mm -hmm. um, I'll be doing that at Magicopolis uh, at the end of this month in uh, February in Santa Monica. Oh, nice. It's okay. a one-hour show with the music and, and magic. And it's a, when we sell the medicine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's the magnetized water? What is, what is magnetized mineral water? Well, magnetized water is something you can buy on the internet all over the place. It's water that's been uh, magnetized uh, between two magnets, and it's supposedly uh, health benefits and all kinds of stuff. And, you know, I, I think it's really ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> so I sell it in my show. Okay. Of course. <laughs> Why when not? I, when I have magnetized water, it's really magnetized. It'll stick to your refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh. We sell magnetized water. We actually have the water for sale. We have bottles of water. And it's bottled and labeled by a local company for us. And um, it's magnetized water diluted for drinking purposes. Oh, okay. And we oh, wow. The show. We also sell the amazing Miracle Oil, which Mi is 100% pure mineral oil. It has no additives, chemicals, dyes, or perfumes, no dangerous active ingredients. Mm-hmm. It's spiritually enhanced, <laughs> mesmeric, mesmerically influenced through the application of natural organic magnetism and animal energies. Oh, a secret okay. Shamanic, <laughs> secret shamanic ritual first revealed to me by a placebo Indian medicine man from Cucamonga. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's great. I know. Oh. I love it. Oh, my God. Um, Basically, the whole show is about lying. I lie about the medicine. I lie about the magic. Right. <laughs> I'm a really good liar. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, no, it's really good. Yeah, it's really good because I buy the whole thing. It's really good. Yeah. That, that's what I'm saying. It's like you're you're actor, comedian, magician. Right. Because I feel like you stepped out of the 1900s and. You know, you anticipate, you read my mind because every time I'm, I, I believe like it's one way, then you show me it's another way and you take me on a ride. You literally grab me by the collar and take me on this ride, you know, until right. the show is over and then you let me go. Yeah. And I've, you know, a long time ago, I've well, seen you the you've described it exactly the way I would like it to be. That's, that's what I feel the experience should be like. Okay, well, you definitely accomplish your goal. Yeah. Because that's what I felt like. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I wanted to, uh, you know, I wanted to introduce something new to our show where, um, where we ask the interviewer questions. And um, so basically, like, kind of like, do you watch the actor studio? Like where, you know, yes, I, I do watch it. Yeah. And I, I really, you know, um, love how they ask, you know, you know, kind of like, um, you know, like, you know, are you, you know, what's your favorite food? Yeah, and questions. yeah. And, um, just to kind of get a sense of, you know, a deeper sense of what, you know, um, the universe, the, the interviewees, uh, tastes are. So if, you know, I just wanted to ask you a couple of questions and just, sure. you, all right, so I'll, you know, ask him and just say the first thing that pops in your head. All right. All right. So, um, okay, so uh, blank always uh, makes me feel inspired. Music. Okay. Um, I laugh every time I think about... I really love, like uh, Gary Larson and Jerry Amarangan, uh, the neighborhood, those things. They always make me laugh when I think back on them. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, if I could be anything, I'd be... A magician. <laughs> okay, <laughs> of course. Uh, hot or cold? Hot or cold? Yeah. Which do I prefer, or just yeah? What do you prefer? Hot, cold? I I I 
tend to be hot. I, 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 I focus on stuff that interests me and that I like, and I'm very enthusiastic about all of those things. Uh, but I'm, I'm pretty an idiot about everything else. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like a little kid, really, uh, with attention deficit disorder. I have lots of interest and, you know, a wide-ranging interest, but um, <clears throat> I, I flirt like a butterfly from thing to thing. <laughs> Magic is the only thing that's the only thing that's stable in my life, and Magic and, and my wife. Oh, okay, all right. Well, you said in one of your acts that your mom. Uh, what was it that you said you wanted to be a magician when you were a little boy, and, and your mom said? My mom, when I was nine, uh -huh. I said, "Mom, I, I want to be a magician when I grow up." She said, "Nonsense." You can't be both. <laughs> 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 oh. Pretty much true. Yeah. Right. She was. Yeah. I can believe that. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So my next question. Uh, so imagine if you had superpowers. What would your superpower be? Well, my magic is basically my superpower. Exactly. You know, I have the ability to read minds. To uh, change uh, things with my mind, like to change a card from one card to another, you know, uh, to pull coins out of the air, to make rings penetrate each other. Basically, my superpowers are all for stupid things. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. I guess it could be useful, but I threw it away on, on magic for, for entertainment. Oh, okay. So for me, my superpowers would be the ability to do the things I claim to be doing on stage. Oh, okay. All the time. For real. Well, as far yeah. as we're concerned, you do do it for yeah, real because I concerned. still haven't figured it out. Yeah. So. <laughs> uh, and 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 finally, uh, if you had a warning label, what would it say? Oh, I got cut out for me. Oh. Sorry. Oh, okay, no problem. Oh, okay. So I'll ask a ask you again. Um, if you had a if you had a warning label, if you were like a bottle or something, but if you had a warning label, what would it say? A warning label? Yeah. Um, test and verify. <laughs> <laughs> test and verify. Test and verify. All that's right. So that, was, that was cool. That was... I, I, I would lie to you. I'd rather lie to you than eat. <laughs> Test and verify. Test and, exactly. Test and verify. We thank you very much for taking time out to uh, for this to, interview. Yeah. The, uh, well, we really I enjoyed it. This has been a, uh, a lot of fun. I hope to see you guys again sometime. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. We definitely in, enjoy your show. So absolutely. Well, I'll be at the Magic Castle uh, February, February 10th through the 16th. Okay. If you guys want to come up and see me, let me know and I'll get you. You can be my guest. Oh, oh cool. thank you. That's That'd awesome, be great. man. Thanks, Pop. Uh, all right. All right. We look forward to it. So, look, to follow us, you can go to iTunes, tune in. You can like us on Facebook at He Said, She Said, LA Rock, and be the VIP. There's a lot of He Said, She Said out there. So, make sure it says LA Rock and be the VIP. Also, you can follow us on Twitter at LA Rob and do the VIP. And if you want to follow LA Rob's shit, I mean, his stuff, you can go to Mel Hondo, M A L E H O N D O, at YouTube. Did I say everything? You do? Okay. Well, oh, oh, no, 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 wait, you missed one. What? Lord Tyree, L O R D T Y R E. That one is not in one of my own words. And I'm not calling him for work anything. So that's probably not my stuff. At least not on my. Yeah. Uh, Alrighty. Or off my cable. Okay.